Hello, Manchester youth. My name is Allie Fields. I am the Director of Social Justice here at Manchester United Methodist Church. And today I get to talk to you guys about racism. Racism is a tough subject to talk about. Actually, I think it's really tough to talk about with adults. Um, I'm happy that you guys are talking about it because I think the younger you are when you start having these conversations and navigating these conversations, the better equipped you are to navigate these conversations as you get older. Um, and it's important that we work to dismantle racism. Why? Racism, racism is bad. I'm just going to name it. Racism is bad. Okay, so racism is prejudice, discrimination, or antagonism. Um, so like being mean, uh, directed against a person or people on the basis of their membership in a particular racial or ethnic group. Typically, people within the, the Black community, people within the Muslim community, people within the Asian American or Indian, or I'm going to be missing groups here, right? But it's, it's groups that are in the minority who suffer from oppression and, and, and harm and prejudice and, and all sorts of negativity just because of the color of their skin or because of their ethnic background, right? So that's bad, right? That's not how we're supposed to be as Christians. So two things that it's important to talk about when we talk about racism are bias and privilege. What is bias, right? Bias is an inclination uh, of temperament or outlook, right? So bias is a preference. Okay, so I've got two kids, my, my sons Wyatt and Harrison, and sometimes I'll teach teach them. I'll be teach choir or I'll do Sunday school. And like, I will try not to show a preference for them. But like, you know, they're my kids. So if one of them starts acting up, I will absolutely go and discipline them immediately, probably sooner than I discipline another child that isn't mine. Um, because I have a bias, you know, it just, it's just there. I also have a bias for like pepperoni pizza as opposed to any other pizza. You know, I prefer can like certain types of candy. I have a bias for like I like really like hot tamales. I have a preference, a bias towards hot tamales. So that's bias, right? And something else is privilege. So what is privilege? We each have privilege. And privileges. Privileges are benefits that we receive or hardships we avoid just by being ourselves. Like most of the time we don't even know about it. Like we're just enjoying these benefits or avoiding these hardships because we look like we do, we live where we live. Or we're privileged to be Americans. We, we live in a country where we have running water, modern uh, access to modern technology, and the freedom to worship together. So privileges are connected to certain groups or identities and privileges can be big or small. For example, white privilege allows a white person to easily find a bandage, like a Band-Aid, that approximately matches their skin tone. White privilege also means that white drivers are much less likely to be pulled over by the police. So we talk about bias and we talk about privilege, privilege within the context of racism because our bias and our privilege can sometimes make us blind. To racism. Sometimes we just, we don't see it because we've never had to see it. We talk about bias, especially if we're members of a dominant um, racial group, if we have white skin. I don't know if you guys, I'm not a huge fan of these fitness trackers. Um, they're terrible, don't use them, but, <laughs> but there is science and a lot of studies that have shown that those trackers don't um, work very well on different skin tones, on darker skin tones. That's a bias, right? That, that's a systematic bias, right? They, they created these fitness trackers and didn't think to consider people with darker skin tones because racism has been around for so long and people haven't talked about it for so long because it's, it's been uncomfortable. We look at bias and we look at privilege to sort of unpack areas where we may not have noticed the racism before. A, a white person can go into a drugstore and find a Band-Aid that matches their skin tone if that's what they're looking for. You know, what does it feel like to be a person of color and not have that option? This is why we talk about these things. So we, talk, we talked about racism and then we talked about bias and privilege. And when we look at racism, it's important to consider our bias. So what are our inclinations? And examine those because sometimes they're automatic.
And also to look at our privilege. Like what haven't we noticed? Because as members of the dominant racial group, what haven't I haven't we seen because of our privilege? The next thing I want to talk to you guys about is a story from the Bible. In Mark chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, this is a story of Jesus healing a paralytic. So Jesus, I can't remember the town he was in, but he came to a town and he was in this house and the house was full. You know, people came to Jesus from all over wanting to be healed, right? They heard that Jesus performed miracles and they all wanted to be a part of it. So all of these people were, were, were stuffed into this house. There was this man who he was paralyzed. And so, but he had friends who cared for him and loved him and carried him on a stretcher to this house to get him access to Jesus, right? But when they got there, the house was so crowded, they couldn't get in. A friend of the paralytic, you know, they're carrying him. They're, they could have turned around and went home, right? Like, we tried. Hey, friend, you know, I'm sorry, we tried. But, but they didn't do that. What they did was, is they went up to the roof, and there was a hole in the roof. And they lowered their friend down into the middle of the room right before Jesus. So Jesus would, would see him. So, so their friend, their paralyzed friend, would have access to Jesus, right? They didn't have to do that. But they did. They went the extra mile for their friend. And Jesus saw him and healed him. It's a really beautiful story. And I want to leave it to you guys to sort of talk about contextually why we talk about that story um, when we're talking about racism and bias and privilege. So I think it's really important to talk about how the United Methodist Church feels about ra racism and what their position is. So the United Methodist Church has a position on pretty much everything. <laughs> um, if you're curious, so I'm going to read to you from, this is the social principles of the United Methodist Church. These are their little booklets. Um, I have plenty of them. If you're interested and want a copy, just email me at ally.fields at manchesterumc.org. I'm happy to get you one. So I'm going to read to you from, this is chapter 162, subsection A, rights of racial and ethnic persons. Racism is a combination of the power to dominate by one race over other races and a value system that assumes that the dominant race is innately superior to the others. So that kind of sounds like the definition of racism that we talked about earlier. Now this next part I really is important. Racism includes both personal and institutional racism. Personal racism is manifested through, the individu through individual expressions, attitudes, and behaviors that accept the assumptions of a racist value system and that maintain the benefits of this system. Institutional racism is the established established social pattern that supports implicitly or explicitly the racist value system. What I think is really important is that the racism is brought, is brought into two categories, personal, so that's individual, what we do, and institutional, so the systems that have been created by people. So that individual, that personal racism becomes institutionalized, right? It becomes inherent in our system right? Which is very, very dangerous. Racism manifested as sin plagues and hinders our relationship with Christ in as much as it is antithetical. So it's the opposite to the gospel itself. So racism breeds racial discrimination. And we define we, the United Methodist Church, defines racial discrimination as the disparate treatment and lack of full access and equity in resources, opportunities, and participation in the church and in society based on race or ethnicity. So, you know, we're talking about racism. We're, we're digging into these things. We're having these hard conversations because it matters, right? It's, it's part of who we are as Methodists. So I am so grateful that you guys are learning about this in high school. You're learning how to have these conversations. You're, you're wrestling with these tough con concepts. Like, what does it look like? What can I do? Where's the bias in my life? There's a lot we can do. You know, there's a lot we're doing at Manchester. You know, a lot of it is education-based, right? Where we are doing book studies. 
Um, there's a book study that I offer that I'm going to be offering called So You Want to Talk About Race. Um, it's written by a woman named Ijomo Iluwo, who is uh, biracial. Uh, she presents as black. And she wrote this fantastic book about racism and talking about racism, right? We've also, for the past couple of years, had a conference called Walk Justly. At Walk Justly, we we talk, we, we are very intentional about bringing in other voices, other voices from other cultures from that are not our own. Because the best way, or one of the best ways to um, combat racism and to unpack our bias and our privilege is to be exposed, is to be in community with people who don't look like us, people from different backgrounds. When you learn, when you enter into a relationship with people who are different from you, it is just beautiful. But even though it may seem like we're really different, we're really not. We're all humans. We're all children of God. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your attention. If you have any other questions or would like to engage further on these issues, or if you're interested in book recommendations, uh, I would love to talk with you. I would love to um, to send to send some book recommendations. So thank you so much. Thank you, Beth, for this opportunity. And um, have a great talk.